How's it going guys? So it's 4.15 Monday morning. Just got out here to the barn. Gonna get group one over to milk. We always bed Monday morning, so once we get pens one and two out, I'll bed this half of the barn. So when I go to clean these stalls, I'm just gonna get rid of all the manure and moisture. I'm not gonna worry about pulling any fresh bedding back. We bed three times a week, try to stay ahead of it, try to keep them dry, keep fresh bedding on there. I milk about four or five shifts a week normally, uh, usually the morning milkings. Chasing these group one cows over to the holding area now. So Megan got the milk house set up. She just started up the milking system. She works every morning and afternoon during the week and then one weekend morning as well. So most mornings she's here milking. I got group two into the holding area. Megan's gonna work at milking those. I'll head out and get this bedding now. This dust is pretty nasty. Now we have the barn opened up pretty well, so it's gonna clear out pretty fast. I gotta wear my mask or I'll be sneezing and my lungs will not be happy with me. I really don't like the hydrated lime in the winter months because the barn's all closed up. But uh, we got most of those curtains open, the end walls are open right now. So you can see there's barely any dust making its way over to the other two groups of cows. All right, ladies, head back. You can actually hear the milk coming through the milk pump. That's the line right there that runs over the milk tank. This is gonna be the first side of pen two I'm about to let out, so I need to go switch the gate. Group one's all milked, that's 42 cows. Open up group two, I always like to double check. I came in that back door with the skid loader just in case I would somehow forget to close that gate. Things like that have happened before and you end up with a bunch of cows running around outside in the dark. The good thing with dairy cows is they'll all stick around the farm. They're not gonna go and run off. We got the morning chores finished up and got some breakfast. They're working at the silo again today and that's 100 feet right there. They're gonna be pouring soon. I'm hoping to get the drone up there while they're pouring this afternoon and get some footage. We're gonna work on the disc fine a little bit in the shop. So the two outside discs we noticed have some plate on them. The inside ones don't move nearly that much. So there's a shaft that runs in between these. There's a little bit of wear on those. I guess we're gonna change just the outside too. 
see if we can get those changed. And then the other thing we want to do is change a bunch of these plates. These are what slide on the ground, they get worn out. Every disc has its own gearbox. There's oil in them, and then there's just a little shaft between them. The guys at the disc buying place said these shafts can start to wear as well as the part it goes into there on that where the disc goes to get that part replaced. You gotta tear everything apart. It's a more expensive thing, so you can just change these shafts. So there's a new one. Sounds like a cement truck's pulling in. That's the second truck for today. Checking the oil now, this disc, just a little dipstick in the back of it. Yeah, there's, there's oil in there. This will be 100 feet. I'm not sure how many buckets it takes to pour one ring. It takes them maybe half an hour or 45 minutes to pour one ring, so it's not too bad. So the reason they're not using a concrete pump is because it's just seven yards or just under seven yards per ring. And it's a lot to get a concrete pump set up. And it's just for that small amount of concrete, it just wouldn't make sense. So this is kind of an old fashioned way of doing it, but it's a proven method. It's definitely more than a five gallon bucket. I have four cows I want to dry off this afternoon. Two of them are in the parlor right now, so I'm going to set this pen up so I can sort them. I like to keep them in this area until we can take them down to the dry cow barn after I get them all dried off. I just get this constant feeling that I'm being watched when I'm around the farm recently. They're usually not looking, but it's just strange to have people working above you constantly. I just dried off two cows, just put a treatment in their teeth with a sealer. So we're going to stop milking them now for a couple months before they have their next calf. We'll sort them out into that area, and then I'll chase them back to that little pen I made back there. We need $9.98, $9.99. Right here. It's a really good cow there. First lactation, she was still milking 80 pounds, like a four and a half percent fat. She was due to dry the end of last week. And that one there, 9.98, she only had like 35 pounds. It's just funny how some cows hold their milk so much better. I have two more to dry off in a little bit then.
I asked the guy how many bucket loads it takes per ring. He said it was about 60 something for their 20 foot silos. He never got around to counting for the 24 footers, so might be 70 or 80 buckets to do a ring. Back in the shop here a little bit. Dad's going through and changing those worn out shoes. It's nice to change them before they break off in the field. Now I'm going to take this other end apart. We'll do the exact same thing on this side. I have all four cows dried off now. We're going to trail them down there. We're trying to change this other shaft and we just can't get it out of that gearbox. We're going to take it to the guys that work on these. Might need to get some new parts in there if everything's frozen up. Even if we get it out, it'll be damaged then. There's a local guy. It's called the Disc Mower Doctor. It's where we get parts. It's aftermarket stuff. We tried heating it there. He said it's not really good to heat it because you can damage the seal in there. He said you really should just pull it out. I don't even know if you should be hitting on it like we were. So. I'll take a look at it, make sure it's working properly. I'm going to go through and check the oil in all these gearboxes. Go through and check the knives as well, flip some of these if they're getting dull. If you turn these diagonal, I think you can reach the oil check. I went through, checked all the oils, and now I'm going to just make sure all the knives are in good shape. So these are double-sided knives, so they're sharp that way, and then you can flip them over and they're sharp again, where well, you can get more use out of them. I prefer to use a ratchet for this because you got to make sure this nut is seated up in there properly so it holds it in place and if you're going too fast it'd be hard to do that I think. A couple years ago for those of you who've been around for a while we got these metal rollers put in this mower from a local company. They're uh, it's not a New Holland part. We found that crimping the spring forage crops really helps it dry out better. The one year we had rented these tow behind crimpers after we were mowing it we were crimping it with those saw a big difference in drying that year so we decided just to get those better crimpers put in our mower these are just very aggressive metal crimpers once the disc hit it throw it up through the rollers there crimp it good and that just seems to help dry the crop out a lot better there was metal ones in before they just weren't nearly as aggressive you can see how deep these grooves are there interlock there so it just really breaks that stalk up as it's going through Pretty much everything's ready to go in this mower now. We just need to put that last gearbox on. So I'm gonna head up to the milking parlor. I need to put the teat dip barrel in place there for the milkers this afternoon. It's Tuesday now, the silo builders are not here today. I think they're planning to work tomorrow. There's a chance of rain a little bit, but not as much. We get our teat dip in these 55 gallon drums. It's a iodine with emollients in to keep the uh, skin on the teats healthy. Just a little bit in there. I'm gonna try to pour into the new barrel.
Should last a couple months. This is the post dip we use after the cows are milked. Dip all the teats to help protect against infection. Dad got back with this part. They pulled the old shaft out of there. Replaced some of the seals in this one. So we're good to go now. We're gonna mount it back on the mower. This spine's ready to go, greased it. We're gonna need to hook a tractor to it, make sure everything works then. But as far as we know, it's field ready. The rain quit now. Silo builders are back. They're gonna set the forms up to pour first thing tomorrow morning. Trying to get things wrapped up because they have another silo to build before the spring crop and another farm. They just brought our silo pipe and the roof. This will all be going up next week. And it's gonna be a center fill silo. You'll see that getting set up, but the pipe's gonna go into this this uh, gooseneck. It's gonna take the feed to the center of the top of it. We'll get to check that all out up there once they're finished. I'll wrap this video up here. Appreciate you guys watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.